seen as one of the most difficult bosses in Dead Cells, if not the most difficult enemy in the entire game. The Ender of Runs, the 2BC Gatekeeper. In this video, I want to teach you everything you need to know so you never have to fear Hand of the King again. What's going on everybody? I am V.me. Uh, you may know me from a lot of my other Dead Cells guides, especially the over-explained boss guides. And we always get tons of requests to continue that over-explained series. Um, and the one I want to talk about next is probably the most important one of all, which is the Hand of the King. Uh, now you may ask me, you know, why skip over Timekeeper? Uh, why skip over Concierge? Uh, why go straight to Hand of the King? And that's because when it comes to actually getting through Dead Cells, Hand of the King itself is probably the biggest hurdle for a lot of people. Uh, you may be able to brute force your way through a Timekeeper. A Concierge is almost like a walking punching bag. Obviously, there's tips and strats that will help both of those fights go to the next level. But Hand of the King, there's just so much going on in that fight that I want to talk about that as soon as I can. Now, of course, if you do like these kind of guided videos, uh, definitely leave a like. Uh, let me know in the comments if this worked out for you or if I missed any important detail. And finally, the best way to play Dead Cells is your own way. The actions I take in this boss fight may not be the same as you and may not apply to your kind of gameplay. And that's perfectly fine. In fact, if you have other ways to go about this, just let me know. And finally, please subscribe. We do Dead Cells content every week. We have week of other roguelikes and we play a lot of new games too. So it'd be awesome to have you here. So first, to start off, let's talk about the Hand of the King fight itself. Hand of the King is this giant enemy with a sword that stretches almost the full length of the arena and whenever he sees you walk up to the platform he gets instantly pissed uh, the arena that you fight in has two spike pits two ice platforms and two electrical barriers that don't deal damage but they prevent you from actually sticking to the wall hand the king himself has an attack range that's pretty close to the full size of the arena it's not you can stand to the other side and dodge an attack but because he often attacks multiple times in a row uh the chance of the second one being out of range is pretty slim uh hand of the king is also one of the few bosses that has full immunities to a lot of different actions uh, for example he is completely immune to stun you cannot actually put stars over Hand the King's head using items like the stun grenade or the cudgel. Uh, Hand the King is also resistant to arrows and what I mean by that is he has an aura that will actually block an arrow um, and it only happens once say maybe in a five second cooldown and it only occurs in front of him. He actually does sort of a parry animation and this aura will just make whatever arrow fall to the floor. Um, that Something like an explosive crossbow will still do damage. Um, something like a repeater crossbow may still get some bullets through the shield because they aren't spaced evenly. Things like Ice Bow, things like Marksman Bow will often get rejected if you shoot them in the face. Uh, finally, Hand the King does have some uh, ability to be moved. For example, if you're using Spartan Sandals, if you're using Wave of Denial, or if you're using Explosive Crossbow, it is possible to bump Hand the King a little bit. And a lot of times that will interrupt his attack it may not completely stop the attack from actually coming out. Uh, for example, when he's firing his bomb toss and you use a giant whistle, he'll probably get knocked out of whatever he's doing for a short while, but it, then he'll continue that after the effect is done. So whenever you do enter the boss fight for Hand the King, you want to be prepared to ditch any weapons that may not perform quite well in this fight as others. And we'll talk about the weapons a little later in the video. Um, so Hand the King himself, he has multiple attacks, if not the most attacks out of all the bosses. And figuring out which one he's doing is really a quick reaction. Uh, but if you see him doing anything, you can just kind of expect to do something in response to it. So first, when you initially start the fight, Hand the King does this standing upward slash. It's very slow. It's very painful and he will block arrows while he's charging it. 
So typically, you'll see me go directly behind Hand the King. If I have a turret, maybe I'll place the turret in front of him. That way he has uh, the chance to destroy it and maybe get like burning oil on the floor or something like that. Um, or if the turret can tank the upward slash, he's going to look to me after and that lets my turret get free rank. Uh, the upward slash lasts for quite a while. It is parryable, though I would advise against it because the fact that it's so slow uh, may cause you to mistime the parry and actually take a hit. Uh, you're better off using that opportunity to get in damage rather than sitting and waiting for the parry. Hand the King's next attack is a bomb toss. He'll plant himself on the ground, toss upwards to probably six bombs in the sky that have really good tracking. So wherever you're running, he is trying to throw those in your direction. And they do not guarantee to explode once they hit the floor. If you run far enough out of range, there is a chance the bombs will explode before they touch the ground. Uh, and that can cause some issues where you think you're able to dodge without using a dodge roll. But come to find out, that bomb is going to explode as soon as it gets to you. These bombs can be parried. If you're using something like the Bloodthirsty Shield or Punishment, you can move out of the way, parry any random bomb that's kind of strayed from the pack and get in either some damage or some dot on Hand the King. Uh, these are susceptible to Magnetic Grenade, Wave of Denial, and Assault Shield. So all of that stuff is pretty decent in this boss fight and will actually deal damage back to Hand the King. Hand the King also has a flag call. Uh, once again, he plants himself down, does an animation, and brings three flags down from the sky. These flags have a health bar. They are destructible and they count down to when they are ready to essentially self-destruct. Uh, you do want to destroy these as soon as possible. Of course, leaving them up and trying to fight in a small section of the map could lead to some issues later. Uh, but it is possible that you just destroy the one and then try to hold down a certain space. One thing that you do have to watch out for, a lot of weapons do nothing against the flags. Take Magnetic Grenade, for example. Um, if you just toss down the Magnetic Grenade, the lightning does not touch the flags. So you will have to go over and attack those. If you are using a weird build, say for example, Hokuto Bow, with turrets and a shield. Uh, you may not be able to attack the flags the way you particularly want to. Uh, so use a down slam. You can actually just jump straight up and then slam straight down and destroy these flags. They have probably just one health each, but that's one way to get rid of it if you don't have either the ammo or the ability to actually get the shot off while Hand the King is still attacking you. Next is probably one of Hand the King's most deadliest attacks, which is a triple slash. Using that symmetrical blade, Hand the King does a forward lunging attack. He steps forward slightly with an attack that hits both in front of him and behind him. And then finally, he ends it with another step forward and a another horizontal attack. This attack is parryable. In fact, if you have a shield and you're learning how to parry stuff, this attack is probably the best thing to learn how to parry. If you don't have a shield, dodging this can be done in a couple different ways. One, you have to remember that if you go behind Hand of the King, you will be hit by the second attack. So what you can do is you can either dodge roll through Hand of the King for the first attack, double jump to avoid the two-way attack of the second hit, and then dodge roll back through Hand of the King to dodge the third hit. Another way you can do it is you can double jump over the first attack. That helps a lot if you're using weapons with hang time, say throwing knife, crowbar, ice shards, things like that. Dodge roll through Hand of the King, 
this will actually let you dodge both the front and the back end of the double attack and then you just double jump again to dodge the third there aren't too many clear advantages over using one dodge pattern over the other or you may dodge roll through and then jump immediately to the ice platform that way you dodge the third hit the ice platforms are really good for dodging most of the attacks um once we get to the second phase try not to spam the ice platforms very much because we're gonna need those later during this phase hannah king has a running charge it's like a football tackle that he does just one time across the arena it does deal damage it does give you malaise it can be parried but if you try to parry it you will still be pushed to the edge of the arena and you can fall into spikes which will give you a lot of damage and put you in a terrible spot if you do go for the parry try to dodge roll through in order to prevent yourself from being cornered uh, you can also double jump over the charge if you don't want to deal with it at all uh, but of course you can just dodge roll through and you'll be fine and probably in a really good position to fight him the second attack from Hannah King that may be the most deadly of them all is the slash slam so this is the first time he actually slams the floor just like the telluric shock item and it comes out pretty quickly quickly enough that will catch really any player off guard the first attack can be parried but the slam cannot you have to jump over the slam you also cannot dodge roll through the slam it's like lava on the floor so long as you're above him you won't take any damage if you have a weapon that lets you float for example throwing knife you can jump and use that and dodge make sure you double jump though because there's a real chance that you actually get hurt if you're too close to the ground the parry on this attack has some pretty tight timing to it because that first slash comes out so quickly uh, what a lot of people do is they just wait you see hand the king doing no actions they'll plant themselves on the ground and just parry at the first opportunity he does something because the first attack of the triple slash and slash slam and charge can all be parried there's almost no reason to not simply do it you just have to be careful because when it comes to dealing damage you may bait yourself into doing too many things at one time so if you have for example a quick bow and you're getting in those shots thinking that you can also get the timing on that parry you might wind up just getting hit so in that case standing still waiting for that attack to come out doing the parry then jumping over the slam may be the right way to go about it so after hand the king has done all of this stuff he will go into a second phase uh this occurs in 1 bc or higher i believe in 0 bc as a beginner you still get another phase after this but i believe the same tips that we're gonna go over right now will apply for you as well so after you do enough damage to hand the king he will vanish if he did any attacks beforehand the attacks are still there such as the bombs or the flags that may need to be cleared otherwise he floats off and puts himself into stasis while he lets his cronies do all the work uh, those cronies will include two elites and some regular trash mob i've seen impalers i've seen lacerators i've seen slashers worms inquisitors uh, the only thing you won't see are like really exclusive monsters like the spinning knight or any monsters from rise of the giants or bad sea there's a few ways to go about doing this uh, a lot of people will just aim for the elites kill them asap and then when hand the king falls to the floor out of stasis a lot of times he actually kills whatever is below him so those might be standard zombies, they may be scorpions. It's a high chance they get killed by Hand the King himself. Typically, whenever I do this, I have the time. I just like to kill everything. I'll often, especially if I'm dealing with an elite worm, 
I will kill the elite worm first, kill the trash mob second, and then the second elite, say the Inquisitor or the Lacerator, I'll kill that next. That removes the factor of any eggs being on the ground, removes the chance that nothing dies when he falls, and gives me a clean second phase. So this second phase, actually the last phase of the fight, Hand the King has all the same stuff that he was doing before. But there's two new attacks added in. One is an upgraded charge. His tackle now does two tackles. He'll go across the screen in one direction. Then he'll go back across the screen the other direction. You can double jump over these. You can parry both of them. You can dodge roll through them. The timing's not that bad. But the chance of you getting knocked into the spikes is really high. So that is the only thing you're looking out for. If you do get snagged by the tackle, you can actually spam jump to try to get either to the ice platform or dodging the second charge. Either one works because that just keeps you out of the spikes, which is a best case scenario if you get hit by the charge. The other new attack that gets added is what we're going to call a super slam. And this one has a really good tell to it. Hand the King walks across the screen. He wants to go into the center of the map. He becomes untargetable during that. And then you can see a little flicker before he decides to jump up in the air and do this massive slam. The slam itself lasts for longer than a double jump. The ice platforms are there so that you have the opportunity to dodge the attack. So once you see him going to the center, go ahead to the ice platform as soon as you can. Once he jumps, you jump, land on the ice platform, he does the slam, the ice platform is going to go away, so you simply jump off of that. And the timing of all of that is so well orchestrated that you will probably not get hit so long as you jump on that ice platform. If you do not have ice platforms and you have a weapon with flotation, once again, thinking crowbar, ice shards, that kind of stuff, it is possible to jump, do an attack or two, jump again and possibly dodge all of the slam uh, i wouldn't rely on this it seems to be a little inconsistent but it's usually based off of how long you held the x button to jump but once hand and king lands on the ground that's your opportunity to get in damage it's actually really nice that he does it probably more often than not that's the attack you want to see during this phase having to deal with stuff like the flags the bombs, all of that, and the double charge is kind of not that great. The triple slash can be a problem too, but ideally you want to see the slash slam, so long as you have ice platforms to work with. Now when it comes to Hand the King, a lot of weapons actually work really well in this fight, but just like every other boss, there's some weapons that struggle. We already mentioned that you shouldn't go in with weapons that rely on stun, Say, for example, Stun Grenade and Cudgel. Cudgel still works as a shield, it is a parry, but if you have the opportunity to upgrade your weapons before Hand of the King, you should definitely do so. Uh, things that work really well in the Hand of the King fight are things that do ambient damage while you're dodging around. It's a little different compared to Conjunctivious or Timekeeper because they move around a lot, so having a turret on the ground that you can dodge around having lacerating aura that's constantly spinning and attacking him all do really well in this fight a uh, large front loaded damage that relies on cooldown reduction is also pretty good especially if you're running a crit build say for example you're using a giant whistle in a survival build you should probably swap in blind fate if you're using tactics with a quick bow, you should probably use Instincto. That's Instinct of the Master of Arms. That way you get cooldown reduction on your crits. And that may allow you to get off more knife dances, more smoke bombs, or more explosive decoys that all have like a relatively longer cooldown. Grenades aren't all that bad in this fight in general. Root Grenade, Magnetic Grenade, Fire, Cluster, they all kind of work here. 
The only ones I would probably avoid are the stun grenade and maybe the infantry grenade, just because the damage is a little lacking compared to the others in a fight like this. Then for the powers, honestly, all of these really work. Tornado, as you know, I don't really like Tornado in general, so that may be something you would think about not taking. Corrupted Power does give you more vulnerability towards his triple slash, so maybe that's a little dangerous. But being able to melt Hand of the King is really good because he only can do so many attacks so long as he's alive and you go to the next phase. If you can get to the next phase as soon as possible, that's really good. It might be worth the Corrupted Power. The regular primary weapons, however, are probably the biggest thing that you want to think about. Some weapons exceed in biomes, like actually blow biomes away. But once you take it to hand the king, it becomes an actual issue. Uh, big offenders, in my opinion, are Hayabusa Boots, Symmetrical Lance, Marksman Bow, Heavy Crossbow, and Repeater Crossbow. Repeater crossbow is sort of a uh, hit or miss. Because Hand the King has that arrow block mechanic, he will actually block your triangle button. That's the secondary fire of the repeater. And that prevents him from being rooted. If you have the wolf trap or the root grenade, then you're fine. You can just root him, go behind him, and lay in that damage. But if you don't get either of those before Hand the King, you may find that Repeater Crossbow feels awful in that fight compared to the power you got clearing biomes. Pyrotechnics can also be really tough in this fight. The real issue here is that you may bait yourself into doing the full combo with Pyro. And because Hand of the King's attacks are so fast, you may not be able to interrupt your cast and do the dodge roll in time. And because that's a tactics only weapon, Chances are your health is really low. So if you think that maybe you shouldn't do the combo and just like fire individual bullets, you may have been better off just switching to Fire Blast or Alchemic Carbine. War Javelin can also be really dangerous here because you may find yourself teleporting into the spikes and that might be an issue. And finally, as we said, the Cudgel itself does work as a shield, but the stun doesn't work on Hand the King itself. If you can replace it with any other shield, good examples would be the Rampart, Spike, Thunder, even the Ice Shield does really well in this fight. Should probably do so. Honestly, my top picks for actually doing Hand the King weapon-wise really go into like those busted build categories. So think about stuff like full bleeding with blood sword. Think about things like spite sword with shield and just do a full block on one of his attacks and then you just lay in damage after. Consider things like rhythm and bozuki where as he's doing the flag fall you're doing a strum the entire time and getting in a ton of crits that he can't defend against. And then for ranged builds, we already know things like Explosive Crossbow are really good. Ice Shards are really good. You may want to bring out the Alchemic Carbine with the Hokuto, which is a classic build. Or you may go with Electric Whip and Ice Shards attached to it. All of those are really good, so long as you aren't relying on this like sniper aspect with something like a Bow and Endless Quiver or Marksman Bow. Even Infantry Bow sometimes suffers from it, but just get used to rolling behind him and attacking him as often as you can. Don't forget that ammo is a thing. So going into this fight with ammo costs, you may need either a shield, the ammo mutation, or ripper to actually get your ammo back. If you are able to push the phase fast enough, you get all your ammo back during the phase transition. So if you can actually knock him down in one clip, you're probably in good shape. Then of course, Hand the King being the last fight of the game for most people, what you really want to do is reset your mutations. 
I can't stress enough that resetting mutations for this fight is probably the real reason you actually win. That coupled with the build itself really determines if the Hand of King fight's gonna be a win or loss. If you're playing any build with an HP bar, I'd say Vengeance is probably the best mutation for learning how to do Hand of the King. That damage reduction of 60% for a boss that mostly hits in combos really stacks up. And even if you don't have a full survival, full tank build, you'll find that 60% to be a lifesaver. You'd actually be quite surprised about a lot of the mutations that actually work in this fight. Don't forget that there are monsters after the first phase, so you may think while well, brutality, something like combo does actually work in this fight for the final phase. Open wounds is also really good if you have to have a really fast attack speed. And then soldier resistance combined with vengeance can give you almost all the tankiness you need. Now that they change where dead inside drops, I know there's some people who may not have Dead Inside until 4 BC, so Soldier is that replacement. Otherwise, once you're in 4 BC+, plus, you'll probably use Dead Inside in these bosses instead. For tactics, I'm often taking Support or Tranquility every time I do Hand of the King. Tranquility does work on this boss fight. You don't have to be on the opposite edge of the arena. You just need to be outside of standard melee range. Think about Symmetrical Lance, about how far that reaches. That's about how far you need to be for Tranquility to work. Support, however, is the easiest tactics mutation to take. You just put down a turret, and you fight around the turret, and you get a lot of bonus damage. And I feel like so long as you have a turret, that's probably the right choice. By now, you should probably swap off Initiative. Probably get rid of Predator. Probably get rid of Networking. If you want more tactics mutations, Crow's Feet actually does damage based off of your tactics. The slow might be a little dangerous, so keep in mind for that. But when it comes to keeping damage numbers up and you don't have support and you're running, say, a uh, tactics build so Tranquility doesn't do anything, consider Crow's Feet if you want some kind of damage. Then we have other mutations that work really well in this fight. Blind Faith is really a godsend if you're running a shield. Even if you're not survival, you take Blind Faith in here and you're getting at least two seconds off your skills. At maximum level for survival, you can get five seconds on every parry and that's incredible. Hard of Ice does work against Hand the King. Uh, you may not get the stun aspect of it, but he can be frozen and he can be rooted too. So Heart of Ice gives you a lot of cooldown reduction just for playing normally. And I feel like that is really good when you're actually coming in here as a survival build. Finally, especially if you are learning Hand the King, you may consider using things like Emergency Triage. That way you can actually get the heals off a little faster. Uh, you may take Ammo Mutation. If you think that you need to lay in as many bullets as possible, but you can't push that first phase well enough. Then we have Masochist, which will prevent a lot of the death that may happen from the Spike Pit. And in fact, a lot of people just take Masochist every time they do Hand the King. You may think that going into Spikes is really about the player itself, but sometimes you just get an unlucky setup where you get pushed and there's not a lot you can do about it. So you just take Masochist to prevent that from happening. Definitely nothing wrong with that. And then we have Disengage, which is pretty straightforward. When your HP is low enough, you get this bubble. Uh, you can try to get in hits while the bubble is up. That way you are able to push that phase or you just use a health pot and you keep on trucking. I do of course recommend having some kind of DPS mutation in here, whether it's support on a non-purple build because you're running a turret, or it's open wounds on a slightly slower brutality build 
or at least cooldown reduction on something like a survival build. You just want to move that needle as fast as possible without any detriment to your own playstyle. All right, so that's basically it for this over-explained Hand the King fight. Again, this is the way how I think about this fight. Um, so if you have other methods on how you would do this, then definitely let me know in the comments. There may be things that I didn't touch here. There may be questions that other viewers have, and that's a perfect place to answer them. If you did make it to the end, definitely leave a like. Hopefully these guides work out for all of you. Hopefully it's useful information and if that's worth a like to you then awesome i'd happy to have it of course we do play a lot of games at this point dead cells being the main one subscribe if you like to see more dead cells if you like all the roguelikes or the week of stuff that we're doing and finally you can catch me live twitch.tv slash v.me i stream monday tuesday wednesday starting at 7 p.m eastern hope to see you there and yeah, thanks for viewing. I'll catch you all on the next video.